Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Today we're going to take a look at operating an external antenna tuner with the 7300. In the picture here you see both an LDG IT100 and an MFJ939 tuner. I have both of these and have used them both with my 7300. These are aftermarket tuners that are specifically designed to work with ICOM radios. I know there's some pretty intense debates out there about the quality of MFJ or LDG or which tuner is better. I don't intend to get into that debate. In my experience, each of the tuners has its own pros and cons, and they both seem to work fine. Anyway, let's take a look at what you need to do. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to be connecting up the MFJ 939 tuner. The LDG would be the same in terms of what connections need to be made. So the first thing that we're going to need is a short jumper cable that will go from the radio to the tuner. I've already got the antenna connected to the tuner and the ground strap connected to the tuner. We'll connect a ground strap up to the radio before we finish doing all the connections and powering up. So the coax gets connected to the transmitter input on the antenna tuner and then that gives you your RF between the radio and the tuner. The other connection that you need is a cable to go from the tuner connector to the ICOM external antenna tuner connector for tuner control. Each tuner comes with a cable that has appropriate matching connectors and you simply plug the appropriate connector into the tuner end and then you plug the other connector into the radio and that's pretty much it. Now let's get this all put back in the rack and we'll connect up our ground and then we'll see how this works. Okay, I've got the radio and the tuner back on the shelf here and everything is connected up. We've got a ground and power connected to the radio and you saw how the tuner was connected up. Let's power up the rig. So when you're using an external tuner that is designed to work with ICOM radios, that tuner connector provides power to the tuner. You saw the tuner power up when I powered up the radio. And using it really couldn't be any simpler. There's no difference in the 7300 to the menu selections. If I go to tuner here, we really have the same tuner switch manual auto, push to talk, start, off on, and those two function the same way as they do with the internal tuner. The preset memory clear, that doesn't really do anything for an external tuner. That still clears the internal tuner memories inside the radio. So this function has no meaning for an external tuner. But you don't need to do anything different here on the tuner menu, and there are no other menu selections for activating or telling the radio that it's got an external tuner. So let me make sure we've got nobody here. 12 meters is pretty dead right now. So to tune with the external tuner, you simply press the tuner button and hold it. And you may or may not have heard the relays click, and you probably couldn't tell where they came from, but that was definitely the relays here in the MFJ. And you saw that uh, you may have seen the tune light briefly come on, and it says it got a good match, and we see the tune light on here. And that's really all there is to it. Um, let me just show you quickly how effective a tuner can be. I think I've mentioned this on other videos about the 7300, that my setup here is is not the greatest. I'm in a rental house so I don't really have much in the way of antennas I just have a a random ed fed end fed with a nine to one un un that's out off my back porch going up into a tree so we're gonna take the radio and we're gonna set it to 160 meters and I don't think there's much on there today and I'm going to tune the radio up down here. And it tuned and got a good SWR. WA2IVD testing. And just to illustrate, let's go back up to 20 meters. And 
with the antenna matched for 160, you notice that you know, we can see one signal here. Oh, he stopped, but I mean, we don't even see any noise. My, um, whoops, my S meter reading is just pegged at zero and there's nothing there. So let's try to tune the antenna for 20 meters. Oh, there's somebody talking there. Let's just see if we can catch him. So we're copying one person on 20 meters, and he probably is either running a lot of power or he may be very close. Let's try tuning the antenna now for 20 meters. And you see my S meter, hang on here, WA2 IVD testing, just to keep myself legal. You notice that the signals came up quite a bit, and you can see several other signals out here, and we can see signals down here in the CW part of the band. So the tuner is actually quite effective, especially if you have a compromise antenna, such as I have. So that's really it. The external antenna tuner, as I said, couldn't be easier to use. And everything we've shown here with the MFJ would be pretty much the same with the LDG. It's powered by the radio, the tuner button works, everything else is largely the same. There is one minor difference specifically between the MFJ and the LDG IT100 tuner. And that is that the MFJ tuner is not specifically designed for ICOM radios. This is the MFJ 939, and when I ordered this, I ordered the 939i, which means that it came with a cable for ICOM radios. You can order this tuner as a uh, dash K for Kenwood radios or Y for Yezu radios, and I think there's a couple other brands that it works with. So this is a little bit more universal, and because of that, there's one interaction with the radio that it does not seem to support, or at least when I've tried it on antennas that maybe wouldn't tune up on every band. If you engage the tuner and the tuner is not able to get a match, in other words, this SWR light does not come on green, the tune light or the tune indicator on the display here on the radio still comes on. So you do need to look at the LEDs on the panel of the tuner to determine whether or not it was able to successfully get a match. On the LDG IT100 tuner, that tuner seems to be specifically made to work with ICOM radios, and this tune indicator on the display will match what the SWR light comes up with on the tuner. So if it's not able to get a match, the tune light, or excuse me, the tune display will not stay on after the tune cycle. So other than that one minor difference, the MFJ and the LDG function the same with the radio and the operation is pretty seamless. I really can't speak to the ICOM brand tuners. I don't own one of those. So I have not played with the, I think it's the AH4 uh, or any other ICOM tuners with the radio, but at least according to the manual, operation, again, should be pretty much the same. So that's it for external tuners. Very straightforward and very helpful if the internal tuner will not match. There's one more thing I'm going to cover about an external tuner, and this is in answer to a question that I got in one of the comments and I think other people may have this question, so we're going to talk about it briefly. The question that I got was, if you're using an external antenna tuner, is there any way to select between the external and internal tuner in the radio? For example, if you had different antennas that you were maybe switching in and you wanted to somehow use the internal antenna tuner for certain ones, and the external antenna tuner for others, or if you had some other reason that you wanted to be able to switch between which tuner you were using. And the answer is, unfortunately, there is no way from any menu function to select whether the radio uses an internal or external tuner. And the 7300 does actually detect 
the external tuner live. So you can bypass the tuner by briefly pressing the tuner button. So the tuner is now engaged, and in this case, the external one. If I press the button briefly, you'll hear, you may have heard the MFJ beep, the tune light flashes for a second, and the tune indicator turns off, and that means that the antenna tuner is bypassed, so it's just going straight through to the antenna. But if you want to use the internal tuner, the one thing that you can do, and let me just get up and disconnect it here. This is the cable that goes to the tuner connector on the radio. Well, this is actually the end that plugs into the tuner on the MFJ, but the other end of this is connected to the radio. Now, I've just disconnected this. If I press the tuner button, it's, it's 12 meters, I don't think there's anybody here, but just to make sure. If I press and hold the tuner now to make it tune, it just tuned WA2IVD testing. And you may have heard the relays clicking, but it was the relays clicking inside the radio. So the 7300 does detect basically real time and live that a tuner is connected or not to the external antenna tuner connector. Some of the other ICOM models, the 7100 specifically I know does this, you have to actually cycle power on the radio. So if I were to have um, no tuner plugged in, and I, uh, and of course the 7100 does not have an internal tuner at all, but if you try to push the tuner button with no tuner connected, the radio will not do anything. And if you just plug in an external tuner while it's powered up and you try the button again, it still won't do anything. You have to actually cycle power for the radio to detect whether a tuner is connected or not. With the 7300, it seems to detect it, as I said, real time. So if I plug this back in, you saw the lights flash and come on on the tuner because it got power now. And if I press and hold the tuner button, it just tuned the relays that you just heard chatter are the ones in here. The internal tuner didn't do anything. WA2 IVD testing. So the 7300 will detect an external tuner and switch between that and its internal one automatically just by disconnecting it. So if you did have some reason where you wanted to switch between the two quickly, you could make a jumper, not a jumper, but a, a cable to go in between the antenna tuner and the radio with a switch on it to disconnect it with a switch instead of having to unplug it. That would be one way you could do that. and Maybe you would do that in conjunction with an antenna switch that was connecting different antennas to the radio. So just one other piece of information in case you're trying to do anything a little fancier with an external tuner. Well, there you have it. Obviously, the best solution is if you can have an antenna that's resonant on the bands that you want to operate, or at least an antenna that falls under 3 to 1 SWR so you can use the radio's internal antenna tuner. However, many of us find ourselves in situations where we have to use compromised antennas, particularly if you're doing some sort of portable operation where you may just not be able to get an antenna up that can get below 3 to 1 SWR, an external antenna tuner can make the difference between getting on the air on a particular band or not at all. I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. If you did, I would appreciate a click on that like button. If you find the channel useful, please consider subscribing. You can press the subscribe button, and then there's also the little bell icon that will allow you to get alerted when new videos come out. I also would appreciate any comments or thoughts or other suggestions that any of you have. Please leave a note in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.